What's going on, Doombots? We're going to talk about the state of the game. Now, I'm doing it live. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to be controlled. Um, but I have some positive things to say. A lot more negative things to say. Uh, I think that the game is not in a great place. So just to get that out of the way, if you don't want to see someone else talk about how the game's not in a good place, you can go ahead and click off now and go watch Hello Kitty Island Adventure, something that's more your IQ level. Other than that, the game does have problems and we do want to talk about them. But I'm going to try to look at them objectively to determine if the problems are something that can be fixed or can't. We're going to start at every single point in the game and make it as quick as possible. First, we're going to talk about challenges. The actual truth of the matter, challenges themselves are fine as they are an additional way of getting additional resources. The challenge level of the challenges come up a lot in conversation. Uh, I think that the challenges, no big deal. I don't even think that the rewards themselves from the challenges are that bad or good. But I do think that it always feels in this game, and you're going to see this a lot, like the effort you have to put forward never pays dividends regarding the rewards you get. So as far as challenges are concerned, we could always use more challenges. They should be adding more challenges. Basically, new challenges should be added every time a level cap increase occurs or a gear tier increase occurs just to keep the game keep us hoping to work on something or towards something else. There are a lot of players in this game. There are free to play players. There are new players. There are long time players. There are middle of the ground spenders. There are players who are casual. There are hardcore to the door players. There are whales. All of these players have a different approach to the game and you need to balance it to make the game appease the most amount of people, not the smallest and definitely not the whiniest just find the point so i think you could do a little bit better on challenges but ultimately i don't think there's anything wrong with challenges so arena is fine and i know a lot of people are going to say that they disagree with it no i don't think that arena is healthy but i think that arena is not supposed to be healthy i think that arena is a way to trick players into thinking that cores have value uh, which would be true if this game gave a reason to spend cores on something of value. Ultimately, all of the cores that you could use in this game are fundamentally just for resource refreshes. And I don't think that that's great on its own. As you can see, I have 145 cores right now because I don't need more. And if I do happen to need some more cores, I am a casual spender former whale, recovering whaleaholic, and I'm just very comfortable, you know, making sure that I can have the cores I need when I need them, but ultimately I am getting a couple hundred cores a day, probably like three or four hundred between this and arena and everything. Uh, I don't think arena itself makes a difference. I think that there are points in arena, like I think the average player wants to maintain top 500, just so they can balance out to be purchasing you know, one arena character every day or, you know, three every two days because of how the uh, payouts work on the daily rewards. Uh, I think that the biggest problem with arena is for too long, a team holds the, the roster of meta, but I could see the other side of that complaint, which is if you had to spend too much money uh, always to, or, or resource or whatever, to get whatever the newest arena meta is really quickly, you'd start saying, it's the same thing. No matter what happens, the arena meta will almost always be comprised of the longest term players and the highest spenders. That's pretty much it uh, across the board. And the earlier you started the game, your spending goes way further uh, compared to anybody who's free to play and not starting. So I don't think arena is fundamentally broken, uh, at all i just think that it's a it's a game mode that people are deceptively told is important when it does have important values but it's nowhere near as high a priority that's just my opinion on the matter which is this entire video uh milestones no notes they are ways that you can gain additional resources and then the more effort you put in you get more they're fine they could probably use a little bit of sprucing up that's more of a general issue in the game we could talk about that another time uh, events, I think we have a very large issue. We always see things show up here and none of them ever actually matter other than as news, which is fine. Fundamentally, this is a great news screen. But as an event screen, 
right now we have a Shadowland event and we have this cool long-term reminder that characters exist temporarily in certain locations. I Ultimately, none of this really makes too much of a difference. I think that they'd really need to explore the events because just the occasional thing happening isn't enough. Uh, I don't like to compare this to other games, so I'm not going to, but I do feel like since they've already gone through the effort of making all of the previous character campaigns and orbs and all that stuff, why not just reuse the effort, put them up there, and allow some newer players to have the same crack at a character uh, that some of the older players may have. And I'm not even saying a recent character. We had events as far back as like Pyro that could be uh, re-implemented to the game to give newer players sort of a cool catch-up mechanism to play the game with content that already exists in the game so you don't have to like go out of your way to do anything. Uh, I really don't have to talk about anything. Campaigns? I have one major issue with campaigns uh, and that is that there are arbitrary restrictions. Some restrictions make sense, um, having heroes or something. I don't know why you have to be level 70 to do these harder difficulties. If you want a player to be level 70, make the content so that you need to be around level 70 to do it. Don't put an arbitrary stop on these to prevent people from accessing characters like Hela until a gate point. Or make it easier to get to level 70 by increasing the amount of experience you get uh, between level 1 through 60. Or, you know, shrinking the amount of experience required to get to like level 60 or 65 or 70 or whatever. Uh, this way, newer players can get closer to the end game uh, without the feeling of the weight of 160 characters, all of which are relevant and all of which have demands on your roster. It's really hard for newer players to come in. So I feel like the campaigns themselves are okay. Challenges are challenges. That's no big deal. But like maybe some of these restrictions can be lightened up. I understand some content is designed for endgame uh, and that's fine. But the problem is how long is it supposed to take to get into endgame? And the answer to that question is it should take less time for a new player to get there than me, who started this game in April of 2018 when it came out. That player shouldn't have to take roughly the same time I did to get to where I am in the roster. That's just my opinion. Uh, Blitz. So Blitz uh, went from a dying game mode to a dead game mode in five different updates. Basically, uh, the community made a mistake by complaining about how often they saw defenders. Uh, not understanding that the reason they saw defenders is because everyone worked on defenders. So they changed Blitz once to make it so that you no longer saw defenders. Now you saw actually hard teams to beat, which fundamentally made it difficult. Because prior to this, you had to be able to beat defenders team in Blitz, which was easy to build teams to beat defenders. And now you had to build teams to beat anybody, which was slightly more difficult, but not impossible. Then people started cheating, and then they decided to limit the amount of times you could Blitz a day, which stopped the cheating to some extent. Um, but not really, because anyone who was cheating in that way, I'm not going to say specifically how, but anyone who was cheating could still use that method of cheating, um, but they were just limited to the maximum amount they could get. So it, it favored people with the higher rosters as opposed to people who were willing to spend way too much time to accomplish whatever task in Blitz. Uh, ultimately, the last rework gave out more shards to more people, but changed the grouping of people, if that makes sense. So prior to this, you got about 1,500 to 2,000 people, got 100 character shards, a little or 85 character shards, a little bit less got 55, etc., etc. It kind of worked its way down as time went on, especially for new character Blitzes. Uh, now the way it works is about 33 to 3,400 players get 100 character shards, which is definitely more players. However, it shifted from players who were willing to spend time uh, in lieu of money uh, or in lieu of having a powerful roster to get to those points to now it's 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 significantly easier for stronger and more invested players to obtain these uh, the effort here, therefore diminishing the amount of effort quite literally every other person has to put into the game because it's now have simulation. So Blitz is more or less fundamentally a ga dead game mode. And that upsets me because I really used to enjoy Blitz as a game mode, and I know a lot of people didn't, so I'm not that upset overall. But uh, talking to my roommate, he gave me some positive advice, saying, "Hey, man, I get 39 shards for blitzing every every uh, you know every time a blitz comes out, and that's 39 more shards than I would have had otherwise." And you know what? Sometimes I'm a little bit too critical. So even though I'm not happy with the changes of Blitz, I think that's more of a the grass was greener, and we didn't necessarily appreciate it as much as we did. Uh, and then they made bad changes that we asked for technically, and they suck. 
So here we are, Blitz is dead, it can't be saved because they don't want to save it because now we move to RTA as the time sink. Uh, basically, we can't look at Blitz as a reliable way to gain character shards unless you've already spent a lot of money, played the game for a long time, or have a developed roster. That said, it is a way to get a, an amount of character shards, which honestly for a lot of newer players might be enough. We'll see. Uh, moving to the next part of this, we have Alliance War. Uh, when Alliance War came out, I know I'm going to sound like an old man here. When Alliance War came out, we basically had strategy. We had, you know, a wide open roster. Participation was relevant at key times. Players needed to have access to the right characters. The defenses kind of stabilized over time. A meta was developed and everything was fine. Um, it was once it got to the point when we figured out how to win fights regardless of how many attacks we bought, it became more and more reasonable. Uh, I think at the beginning of war, attacks were something you used to close a gap that was created through maybe making a mistake or maybe through someone being a little bit stronger than you or getting luckier than you. Uh, and then over time, it shifted, especially with the advent of teams with the war tag, specifically war offense and war defense. You kind of spoon fed a meta to everybody saying, this is the team that does this now. And this is the team that beats the team that does this. And ultimately, what you've done is you've created a, a very toxic environment in war, uh, not including matchmaking, which we're not even going to discuss because everyone knows that we have a, an issue now where there are some people who are uh, spending, you know, money or credits or whatever to buy attacks at the beginning of the war because those attacks at the early stages of the war can basically devalue or demotivate another team to attack and win, which, just to remind you, is not fun. We have people who take war very seriously, people who take war not seriously at all, and they're all in the same alliances, so sometimes you have some disconnects there. People who want to be more competitive at war but don't know how to be. We've gone so desperate in war that we are accepting garbage hybrid teams for defense viability, not accepting the fact that the eight or nine offense teams that exist in war can pretty much beat every team that comes out no matter what anyway. So worst case scenario, maybe someone has to buy an extra energy on the attack. It makes sense for like race to finish wars, but it doesn't make sense for, you know, 98% of the roster. And I feel like 98% of the roster taking advice from the top 2% of the roster. Sounds like some bad stuff. So there's some issues with war. War needs to be a little bit less catered and a little bit more active. It needs to be a little bit less how much did you spend uh, at the beginning of war, how many attacks did you do, and a little bit more keyed in on getting the attacks in at key times or right times. Uh, you've seen it done in other games. This is not a hard thing to emulate. Just fix the problems. It was fine for a while. It got worse, and now I think it's at its worst it's ever been. Raids. Uh, no problems with raids. Literally none. Uh, the only problem I have with raids themselves is that, again, same thing with campaigns. I think when you put restrictions on something... There needs to be a re reliable way for you to obtain the restrictions um, for Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. And I think that if you create a new team that's made to be super good at something, City Nodes or Global Nodes or Mystic, Mutants, whatever, na you name it. If you create a team that's supposed to be super good at that, uh, yes, obviously they're supposed to make you money, right? Like That's why you make things to make money, clearly. But... If you generated the content to be used for that, you also have to allow players a decent amount of access to do that. Uh, some teams work that way. Some teams don't. Right now, it's still very difficult to do the hard alpha raids with a city on a city team that isn't the symbiotes. So going forward, anyone who missed out on the symbiote team when they were available but doesn't have access to them now but is now capable of otherwise doing those nodes are kind of SOL. Even the, the ability to purchase doesn't come around often enough. So you're going to have to step up your uh, either... I, the restrictions are fine. I think they're supportive. But you do have to kind of up the opportunity. You have to allow players to make their own mistakes. And more importantly, you have to allow players to make their own positive decisions so they can decide what to work on so they can outscale or outskill players who might not be making the good decisions on that. But I think overall raids are fundamentally okay. I think there's another issue with that. Dark Dimension, uh, no notes. Dark Dimensions are one-time events. 
technically two time events that you accomplish to get a giant boost of resources and some trinket that gets cool. They For the purpose they serve, they're great. Uh, I really don't have a problem with the difficulties or anything. Uh, any issue I would have with Dark Dimension always comes back, of course, to restrictions, but that's its own conversation. The last uh, one we're going to talk about before we get into the actual crux of some issues with this game is Real Time Arena. I think that Real Time Arena is a phenomenal game mode gated behind stupid decisions. I actually very much enjoy Real Time Arena. I don't think the matchmaking is as, as terrible. Uh, maybe it's because of me, but I know that I've generated pretty reliably decent matchups and then the occasional what just happened here fight. Uh, and that's always hard to do. You have to remember these are a game mode where things are generated live. So if people are not excited to play in the game mode, then less people are playing in the game mode. And because less people are playing in the game mode, matchmaking is going to be worse, which is going to make less people play in the game mode, etc. Um, so that's the biggest problem with the game mode. But the biggest thing that's keeping the game mode back is the existence of a battle pass that has nothing to do with your prowess in the game. Uh, if if you want to do a battle pass or the mojo pass, as you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, if you want to have a real-time arena pass uh, and you want to make it acceptable so that people can accomplish tasks in you know one location or the other so you don't have to be a top spender or a great player to get some resources, I understand that. Maybe you you know you cut the amount of uh, milestones to 50, you know, something reasonable like that. Maybe you make it so that it's possible. Maybe you make sure that the events uh, that you can do last longer than a week. I don't have a week to complete these tasks. I have a week plus the next week plus the next week until the pass ends. There's a lot of stuff, but that battle pass itself is what's killing RTA. And I know you, you're, you're making a lot of money on it because people are just buying it to get the resources for Dark Dimension. I do hope that you guys over at Scopely realize that um, you're making money profiting off like the misery of people because they're so miserable at trying to gain the resources that they'd rather waste their time and phone battery by clicking auto in a game mode that they really don't want to play in order to obtain some resources that they can't get otherwise. And if that was your design, congratulations to you. I'll see you in hell when we get there. Uh, the last thing I do want to talk about is is two different deficits we have right here. The first deficit is the character deficit. About six, no, about n almost a year ago now, you guys made an agreement with us where you said you would show us at least one new character, No, like about two or one new characters become farmable every month. And then you created the word fountainable to describe how certain characters show up in different ways. Like you put them in a milestone orb or make them in a node and call them farmable. And that's fine. And you were very good at that. The problem is... That was an agreement that you made with the community, not an agreement that the community asked of you. The community asked that you made characters more accessible quicker, and you did make some characters characters slightly more accessible slightly quicker. Um, and reasonably, you did well enough at it. But unfortunately, as you know, because you clearly know where to put characters when people are farming for them, not all characters are created equal. And while some characters do have definite value for accessibility, uh, other characters have higher value. And if you're holding them back for the sake of profit, I understand that. But fundamentally, you are manipulating the players of the game. And I think that's kind of problematic. Maybe if you just had a rule in general that was 30 days, 60 days, 90 days after a character's done, whatever their event is, that character will become accessible, give or take a couple of days. You know, I'm not being picky on it. But maybe... You know, we know Emma's not available right now unless you buy her, but that means we're just waiting for her milestone event to change, for the new milestone, Silver Surfer, to come out so we have access to it. So I'm totally okay with that, guys. I I support that. It's fine. I want you to make money. I really do because the more money you make, the more likely you are to actually get a QA team to fix the problems with the game. Um, the more likely you are to actually develop a product that people are going to want to play for longer than two years and then quit and they go back to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes or wait for Future Revolution or start playing Dragon Champions. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of other options. Basically, I just want people to play this game for a while because I do content for it and it pays me. So that's my opinion. More or less, 
I, I really think that you should pay attention to how quickly characters become accessible because I think you're dramatically underestimating the amount of people who are willing to spend money on a character that is good because the offers are good. And I think you're overestimating the amount of people who get frustrated and buy a character as opposed to the amount of people who, after a series of frustrating buying, just quit the game entirely. Um, but you might know that better because you have all your PhDs and all of your numbers. So you'll figure that out. I'm sure you won't have anything to say. The last thing I want to talk about is I'm going to call it the gear deficit, but it's really the resource deficit. With many games, clearly you have to spend your resources intelligently. <clears throat> and that's fine. But if the game is designed around having access to key resources... Inability to obtain those resources kind of goes against the idea of spending resources intelligently because that implies that there's a smarter or more ro robust or reliable way you could spend or accrue resources when ultimately that, that's not true. So knowing the correct characters to invest in is very important, but I don't think the issue here for the most part, or at least most players feel, is that... I don't think people are saying, like, I'm wasting resources, I want you to overcome that uh, to allow me to work on on more things, especially with stuff that's, like, super endgame, like Dark Dimension, you know, Gear Tier 15 stuff. When it's new, I get it has to be a little bit scarce. It makes a lot of money. It makes it uh, desirable. But at the same point, we've done the math on it many times. To do, go through Dark Dimension, you need about 1,900 mini-uniques and... I can say from my perspective, on an average day, I get between six and seven. Just go ahead and divide seven into 1900 to figure out roughly how many days it'll take me to get what I need. And that's assuming they all end up being the exact parts I need. And that's including some days getting less and some days getting more and not really spending much money on the process. Obviously, spending money might accelerate that. But realistically, how much will it accelerate, you know? Uh, and how much money will it cost? I think that there's a lot of deficits in here. I think you hear a lot about gold. I think you guys have actually done a reasonable job of giving players more access to gold. I don't think you gave it to the right players, if that makes sense. I think that the players who are capable of doing the, you know, all of the, the access points for um, end game raids and, and stuff, they're getting access to slightly more gold, and I mean slightly more gold, than people who aren't. But all of the players need overall more gold and just a slight increase that's supposed to happen that doesn't change so just because you increase the amount of gold that the top end gets doesn't mean that you fix the gold problem or, or one of the gold problems it means that you are fundamentally pushing the problem down the lane and basically daring players to quit or get to the end game and I think one major solution, and now we're going back to challenges, because I don't think the challenges are fundamentally broken, but I do think the resources are broken. I think you've spent a lot of time worried about what these are going to look like and a lot less time worried about what these do. And I think it's maybe time to, I'm just throwing my point out there, maybe go ahead and delete these first two and then just move the rewards all the way over a tier on every single reward in this game. It's something so small and so minute, but it will give such a huge benefit to players who are both new to the game and long-term players of the game who just quite haven't been able to complete it. You'll basically ingest an excess amount of resources into the beginning of the game with and end the end of the game without completely destroying the economy over the entire game. Players everywhere will get a little bit more. It'll help the starting players catch up in a reasonable way. But right now, there just isn't any fun. And for those who don't know, I'm doing content on this. I'm doing a new player spending series very soon where I will discuss all of these issues. So there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed uh, in this game. And uh, notice I haven't said much positive about this game. And the reason why is the game stands on ceremony on its own. Uh, the game has great graphics. Uh, the gameplay itself is fundamentally okay. Uh, I care more about Marvel than I care about necessarily some of the bugs in this game. So I don't really want to give praise because I don't believe you're supposed to get a gold star for doing your job. I think that's your job. Their job is to develop a game that is worth playing. And they've done a great job of developing a game that is worth playing. 
what they haven't done is a good job of making a community want to play the game. They've actually gone so far at aggravating the community as a whole, as a whole, not everybody, but just generally the community, that players are angrier at them than they are happy to be playing the game. So, ultimately, there's a lot of things that can be fixed relatively quickly here. Uh, and a lot of it's going to sound like you're going to make less money on the deal. But I think you have to remember that the price agnosticism that you so strictly adhere to works both ways. Everyone will always need more. You don't have to give super stingy amounts because the people will continue to spend to get more if what they want is more. But most importantly, a happy player will continue to play the game, even if they're not at the top tier. And a top tier player or a top spender in the game will be more inclined to play if there are more players not theoretically discussing the idea of leaving. So that's that's the state of the game right now. There are bugs, there are back uh, understandings, there's horrible community management uh, there, actually, there is no community manager, let me be clear. The, my idea of a community manager is someone who actually plays the game and in, interacts with the community, not someone who jots notes, not a secretary who jots notes down from the com from community and then returns to the overlords. But, you know, maybe someday you'll get a community manager that knows about the game we're playing. That would be really awesome, and I'd look forward to it. And honestly, I would love to do it because I have just as much animosity to the community as most of the people who already are working as community managers, so we should be okay. Other than that, I'm not calling for the end of this game. I'm not calling for a, a boycott. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I think we're going to play the game, and I think if you get tired of the game, uninstall it, come back in three months if you feel like. It's not a big deal. doesn't matter how much progress you lost. You'll always find new, exciting ways to come back and play a game and enjoy yourself. But... I think that there are problems that can be fixed relatively easily. I think it'll create a better environment for the game. I think it'll uh, still generate more money without much trepidation we're going to see. And ultimately, you'll have more positive feedback. Now, there's always going to be negativity no matter where you go, and I'm going to probably be most of it. So you're not going to get rid of everything, but at least the overarching idea of the community won't be as angry all the time when it comes down to this. So uh, that's pretty much everything I have to say on this matter. Uh, I would leave comments on this video, and I don't know why I'm going to leave comments on this video, but sometimes I just like watching people say mean things, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll just, instead of comments, I'll just put this right on Reddit and then cry. Uh, have a good night, guys. Have a great day. Please try to enjoy the game if you can, and if you can't, please don't waste your time anymore with it. Uh, I've been Tony Scangioli, and I'll catch you guys later.